are now watching The Beach. I've done retrospectives of nearly every new Super Mario Bros. game. They are some of the most popular retrospectives that I've done, and if I include Super Mario Maker for Nintendo 3DS, that is the most popular Trash or Treasure episode I've ever made. When it comes to understanding the fascination behind the series, it's due to a few different factors. Many grew up with these games, and I'm always intrigued when I revisit them, but with later entries, they have a defining factor that usually isn't good. New Super Mario Bros. 2 is the most monotonous, unoriginal Mario game ever made, and it also has a meaningless coin gimmick that resorts to nothing. If that isn't a blatant cash grab, I don't know what is. New Super Mario Bros. U, on the other hand, is a pure rehash of New Super Mario Bros. Wii, with a near-identical structure, with no attempt to iron out the flaws from that game. Like, you can literally take baby Yoshis out of a level, but not regular Yoshi? That doesn't make sense! But the thing is, the New Super Mario Bros. series is, unbelievably enough, one of the most important franchises in gaming, because Mario's return to 2D with the original New Super Mario Bros. left an impact so huge that it's nearly unbelievable. Let's put it this way, 2D platformers were in a rough position after the fifth generation of gaming. 3D games were encouraged to showcase the advances in technology, while 2D games were often discouraged. While I do prefer 3D games, one can't replace the other. Just like how CGI shouldn't be a replacement for 2D animation, I said shouldn't, didn't stop Disney from doing it, Yet again, Disney is far more concerned about rendering hyper-realistic doo-doo for Pinocchio to gawk at, rather than, you know, making competent movies. But New Super Mario Bros. release at a perfect time when everyone and their mother were getting into gaming. Parents saw it as a game they could relate to, since they grew up playing Super Mario Bros., which had a domino effect, leading to the new generation of gaming getting their introduction to gaming. You have to keep in mind, the Nintendo DS was an absolute phenomenon. They were accessible, inexpensive, of superb quality, and had an excellent library of games. It was also the introduction to gaming, not just for me, but for many of my friends as well. New Super Mario Bros. DS has definitely had an impact on me since it was my first mainline Mario game alongside Super Mario 64 DS. I have a lot of memories of playing this game as a kid on my DSi, and I remember playing it before school or playing it late at night when I wasn't supposed to, but I have a lot of memories with this game, and it remains one of my favorite 2D Mario games to this day. Even though the DS was more than capable of 3D games, New Super Mario Bros. showcased that there was still huge demand for 2D platformers, and since then, 2D platformers had a resurgence. Nowadays, it doesn't feel we get enough 3D platformers, but you'd be hard-pressed not to find a modern 2D platformer. New Super Mario Bros. did have a positive impact, but it also had a negative one. It's widely assumed that it led to the bland era of Mario. It just seemed every Mario game after wanted to be New Super Mario Bros. This was especially apparent with the RPGs, but even the games like Mario Party were hit hard. Going from something like Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door to Paper Mario Sticker Star was like going from Wagyu Steak garnished with edible gold with a side of caviar, to just bread and water. The bland era was mostly during the 3DS and Wii U era, but the effects are occasionally present even to this day. Considering the impact of New Super Mario Bros., revisiting it was quite intriguing. What was all the hype about? And was it actually a detriment to not just the Mario series, but Nintendo as well? New Super Mario Bros. was the first Mario game I ever played, and one of the first games I've played, period. And I do have many fond memories playing the game, but as with every retrospective, nostalgia will not play a factor. I don't tend to get very nostalgic over games and media, because I can always revisit them. Life experiences like my trip to Canada back in 2011, my elementary school experience minus Sean, my graduations, and my first time in Greece? Now that's what I get nostalgic for. Even my recent trip to Canada in December of 2022, I just have such fond memories of, and I'm getting nostalgic towards it already. Revisiting New Super Mario Bros. 17 years later was certainly interesting. How well has this not-so-new game held up? And more importantly, is it as stagnant as people make out the game to be? So the real question is, is New Super Mario Bros. true innovation, or did it just sell well? Cause you know what else sold well in the 80s? What? 
Our story begins with Mario or Luigi going on a walk with Princess Peach. They're just going for a nice morning walk when suddenly, lightning strikes the castle, only to then have Bowser Jr. capture Peach. That's right, after Super Mario Sunshine, he kept his word about wanting to fight that Mario again, and it's up to Mario and Luigi to save the day once again. Wouldn't you know it, it's the tried and true cliche, Bowser Bad, Rescue Peach plotline that few mainline Mario games have escaped. If this were any other game, I would groan, but considering this was the first 2D Mario game in nearly a decade and a half, I understand why they kept things simple, and although a story is nice to have, it hardly matters in a platformer, unless it's a certain platformer RPG hybrid. Gameplay-wise, New Super Mario Bros. is very much a Mario game, and right from the first level, the game does a great job showing you all the ropes. The Mario Brothers can run, jump, stomp on Goombas, stomp on Koopas, everything just like before. But the Mario Brothers have also learned some new tricks following the events of Super Mario 64 DS. They can triple jump, wall jump, and even ground pound. All very welcome additions, which complement 2D Mario quite well. The ground pound was in Wario Land and Yoshi's Island before, so it's only natural to have it in a Mario game, and while the wall jump may make bottomless pits more forgiving, it does allow for more varied level design. The triple jump isn't as useful, but it looks super cool. I'll give it that. Unlike other Mario games, Mario and Luigi play identically, and you can choose to play as Luigi in single player by holding L and R before starting the game, which I always do since Luigi is clearly the better brother. The general control, though, is rock solid, Everything feels great, and the physics are a bit more free than prior 2D Mario games. Not to the point of feeling floaty, but they are far more refined than most of the other 2D Mario games. Controlling the Mario Brothers has never felt better in a 2D Mario game, although I will admit, some additional moves would have been appreciated. Originally they were able to punch and kick, but that got scrapped from the beta. I'm assuming because it had the potential to make the game too easy, but the good news is that Mario and Luigi can power up to gain abilities, classic ones as well as some brand new ones. You have the Staples, the Superstar, Fire Flower, the Super Mushroom, they're all here, and they function exactly how they always have. I will say, I've been allured by the rainbow effect the Starman gives a brother. If there's a name for the Nintendo DS rainbow effect, I'd love to know about it, because it's going to be used for my Reverb Song album cover. The thing is, these are only the classic power-ups, but there are three additional new ones. The one new Super Mario Brothers wants you to know right away is the Mega Mushroom. It's on the box art, it's in the first level, it's gonna make Mario and Luigi huge! What it does is turn the brothers into an enormous Koopa slang machine. Also, granting full invincibility, I will say, it looks super cool, and when it's present, it's always fun to use. But unfortunately, it's highly underutilized, resorting to being nothing more than a giant gimmick. If the game had more levels surrounding this truffle of a Mario mushroom, it would live up to its potential. But as it stands, it's a flashy gimmick claiming to be grander than what it is. Like an old PSA about eating healthy school lunches instead of junk food, only to end up promoting unhealthy food anyway. I'm tired of candy! Tired of gum! Tired of hunger! And food that's no fun! I'm tired of pretending I don't like spaghetti! But school lunch keeps me roaring ready and rock steady! Pizza! Spaghetti! Burger! If anything though, the Mega Mushroom makes me feel empowered. It's so satisfying to smash anything in your way and watch everything go flying. It is temporary, of course, but it's still awesome. I just wish it was here more. But the other new quote-unquote power-up does the exact opposite. The Mini Mushroom shrinks the Mario Brothers down to a microscopic size. They gain the ability to jump higher, run faster, and even on water. And I just found out spikes can be dodged after 13 years. Yes, after playing this game for 13 years, I just found something new. He learns something new every day. But this power-up barely qualifies as one, because you can't defeat enemies unless you ground pound them, and just one hit will lead to your demise. The trade-off isn't even worth it. What, you can jump higher but remain incredibly vulnerable? This is hands down the worst power-up in the entire Mario series, and Nintendo knew it was bad too. 
There are sections that require mini Mario, and defeating two bosses with it will unlock World 4 and World 7, so it's really an extra challenge. I will admit, I played New Super Mario Bros. to the point where I know the game like a book. I can beat levels with just the mini mushroom, but all I feel is a sense of stress, considering I only have one chance, and that's the exact opposite of what a power-up should be. But funnily enough, the mini mushroom doesn't have as bad of a rep as the final new power-up. This is one polarizing power-up, the blue Koopa shell. It allows the Mario Brothers to shell dash and gives them the abilities of Koopas. Also, enhanced swimming. It's a pretty rare power-up, only appearing in bonus question blocks and toad houses. Considering you can essentially become a Koopa, the shell can ricochet, which can cause you to bounce all over the place. But honestly, I absolutely love the blue shell. It does take some time to master, but once you do, it is awesome. You can take out nearly every enemy and just blast through levels. It's very similar to the Super Cape in that regard. It is hard to learn, but once you got the hang of it, you are going to be set. Though I will say, Super Mario 3D World handled this concept far better, but I still consider it to be the most underrated Mario power-up. The Mega Mushroom is gimmicky, and the Mini Mushroom is just bad, but the other power-ups are great. The game could have benefited from more of them, though. This is one of the few 2D Mario games that doesn't have a flight power-up whatsoever, but regardless, the selection of power-ups isn't bad, but a bit underwhelming. New Super Mario Bros. has 8 worlds to explore, with over 80 levels. That's a pretty good amount, but how is the level design itself? The game starts off fairly standard. The first level showcases the basics, then the second level takes you underground, and the third level is a mushroom platforming stage, all followed by a fortress stage. But after the first four levels, things start to become truly new. New Super Mario Bros. barely gets credit for how creative it actually is. You'll have levels with bouncy mushrooms to jump off of, as well as moving ones, sometimes even tilting or shrinking. You'll also be dodging snowballs from snow spikes. There are just so many creative and cool levels in the game you initially wouldn't expect. Underwater levels are my least favorite kind of levels, but this game managed to have some cool ones, some even filled with the scary eel Zunagis from Super Mario 64. And there's even a giant one that you'll need to avoid. And speaking of Super Mario 64, you'll also get the chance to ride Dory in some of the jungle levels, traversing across the poisonous purple water. The Mario Brothers also finally get to do some plumbing, and occasionally can traverse a sewer or a pipeline. These stages are a blast to play, and I especially love the one in World 7 with the Baby Wigglers. So many levels in the game introduce new and unique concepts, making them not only memorable, but more varied. Come to think of it, this game has some pretty distinct new enemies. They don't appear often, but it's always a treat finding them. Maybe there's a chance for Dr. Snailicorn and Dr. Mario World? Oh. Another area where the enemy variety really shines is, funnily enough, with the bosses. Mario games have notoriously lacked variety when it comes to bosses, especially in the succeeding new Super Mario Bros. games. It was cool seeing the Koopalings in Wii, but 2 and you? Yeah, you overdid it there. But in the original, we have a Monty Mole in a tank, a mummified Pokey, and even Petey! No, fortunately not that Petey. But my favorite by far is Lakathunder. This Lakitu looks straight out of the Mafia, striking lightning so bright, he needs shades. It's a real shame most of these bosses have never been seen again, but it also goes to show how much variety there is here, especially when it comes to new enemies. Considering the new Super Mario Bros. series is ironically known for stagnation, it makes it even more crazy. I do wish they took more than just three hits to take out, but that's just been a problem with Mario bosses since Mario 3. The levels are fun and creative, and the bosses are as well, but the level design itself isn't based solely on cool gimmicks, because the design itself is also great. This game came out just two years after the e-reader levels in Super Mario Advance 4, so it's not too surprising. Not to mention Nintendo are experts when it comes to level design. Your main goal is to reach the flagpole, but there are also secret exits and star coins to find. This encourages exploration and gives the levels far more depth, and I'm always a huge fan. Never did I find the star coins or secret exits to be hidden cryptically either. They were all in places that made sense, and there's even a few rewards for star coins too. You can unlock toad houses with them, which shockingly enough, are ran by Toadsworth. You know, 
the best Toad, the one Nintendo abandoned? Though to be fair, if I saw Paper Mario Sticker Star unfold, I would've ran too. The Toad houses give you items, or one-ups, and are mostly based on just luck. So unfortunately, they aren't mini-games, but they can come in handy, and you can also get some neat wallpapers for the bottom screen. The secret exits unlock warp cannons, allowing you to skip entire worlds, so if you wanted to, you could beat the game in probably a little over an hour. They also unlock alternate paths, which sometimes have bonus levels or toad houses. From a design standpoint, New Super Mario Bros. seems nearly perfect. My main criticisms are just the lack of varied power-ups and the underwhelming new ones, but there are a few more criticisms that need to be addressed. The timer and score should not be here. The score is useless, and the timer is unnecessary. It's a relic of the past that just puts you under unnecessary pressure. Not actual pressure since you'll likely never run out of time, but it's more of a minor annoyance. And to save the game, you'll need to clear a fortress or a castle, or buy a toad house. Now to be fair, you should be able to clear at least a fortress in a play session, but you can unlock the ability to save at any time once you beat the game. Now, I don't know if it was to make the game more challenging, but since when is saving progress whenever you want to a reward, especially in a handheld game? Again, these aspects aren't even a big deal, but they are worth bringing up. But overall, the gameplay is outstanding. But how has the presentation fared? New Super Mario Bros. does something interesting when it comes to the visual presentation. It's a mixture of 3D models and pre-rendered sprites. Most of the enemies are sprites, but they still look pretty good. Same for most of the power-ups. I'm assuming this was done to ensure the game would run at a smooth 60 frames per second, and if that's the case, it was absolutely worth the trade-off. The Mario Bros. bosses and a few of the enemies are 3D models. It makes the main characters stand out a bit more, which makes sense considering the focus is on them. But regardless, Nintendo handled the limitations of the DS brilliantly, and the game still looks quite nice. The world themes, on the other hand, are stale now, considering we've seen them a trillion times afterwards. But considering just prior Mario games, the world themes are actually quite nice. I especially like the jungle theme. Super Mario Bros. 3 and Super Mario Land 2 still had better locations, but I'm willing to be a bit more forgiving here, because remember, this was sort of a reboot for 2D Mario. I can't forgive it in succeeding entries though. The overall visual presentation is pretty good, but music on the other hand could be the test. I'm not a huge fan of the signature bacapella found in the new games, but shockingly enough, the soundtrack here is excellent. I like the buzz if they're used occasionally, but that's not even the defining element of the music. It sorta has a retro Game Boy sound to it only found here, and all of the music is original as well. The succeeding games reused a lot of music, but mostly from Wii. Most of the music here is still exclusive to DS, and it sounds great. Sound effects are also satisfying as well. When it comes to the presentation, New Super Mario Bros. manages to do an excellent job handling the limitations and provides something still nice even to this day. Goes to show a good art direction goes a long way. New Super Mario Bros. has 8 worlds with nearly 80 levels. As I said before, if you want to warp, you can beat the game quickly, but if you're going for 100%, it's much more fulfilling. Getting all the star coins, finding all the secret exits, it'll probably take around 10 to 20 hours to do so, probably less if you know the ropes like I do, but here's something you may not know. Once you beat the game, by pressing LRLRXXYY at the pause screen, you can unlock the secret challenge mode that doesn't allow you to backtrack. Just like the first Super Mario Brothers, I don't often play it because I didn't find it to be that much more challenging, but it's a nice addition. That's already a lot of content, but there's even more content beyond the main game. Many games from Super Mario 64 DS return here, along with a few new ones. They vary in depth, but they're so much fun to play. Organizing bob -Bombs and whack a monty Mole are some of my favorites, but I don't even want to know how much time I spent playing Picture Poker with Luigi. I played it so much, I think I got the max number of stars. This is why I have a problem even to this day. And I'm not the only one. The added minigames in New Super Mario Bros are such a welcome bonus. 
I especially love Luigi's Casino and the Wanted Poster minigames. It taught me how to gamble when I was five and how to spot a criminal. These games are great overall, and I'm really happy they were added here, even if I hardly play them anymore. The minigames are an excellent addition, but they are mostly from Super Mario 64 DS, albeit graphically enhanced. But there is another mode exclusive to the game, being Mario vs. Luigi. My goodness, I cannot tell you how much fun this mode is. You and a friend compete for stars and go completely against cooperating. Think of it like the battle mode of Mario Kart, but in a 2D Mario game. There are five levels specifically made for it, and they even have blue Koopas to jump on which give you the blue shell power-up, and you only need one game card to play it. The good old days of download play. I remember back in elementary school, my friends Shawnee Boy and Billy put me up against another new Super Mario Bros. expert and bet on who would win. I'm guessing they gambled with Luigi too. The new Super Mario Bros. series is very well known for its co-op multiplayer. However, the first entry in the series did something very different by having the competitive mode, Mario vs. Luigi, and I have tons of fond memories playing it when I was a kid. Thankfully, I haven't joined the, uh, the dark side behind the alleys of Luigi's Casino, because I was too busy knocking the ever-loving stars out of my friends. I mean, they do call me Star Chronics for a reason, you know. It's a shame this mode never returned in future entries, because it would complement co-op very well, and it could bring more variety. But even with that said, it's definitely a highlight here, and it's one of my favorite aspects about this game, 100%. While it's not as feasible playing DS games multiplayer nowadays since the heyday has been long gone, it's still a blast to play, and I hope that one day, we'll see a re-release of the game with online play. But even if you disregard the minigames in Mario vs. Luigi, there is an ample amount of content. It would have been cool if they had a co-op mode though. I replay a lot of GameCube, DS, and Wii games, and it always amazes me how jam-packed they are with content. F-Zero GX is another example that came to mind. It really goes to show that the 6th and 7th generation of gaming were peak, especially for Nintendo, because these games had everything and then some. So far we've established New Super Mario Bros. has excellent gameplay, creative new ideas, a good presentation, and a toad house worth of content, but it does occasionally falter with underutilized or bad new power-ups, and it does retain a few archaic elements. So what's the verdict? I had an absolute blast going back to New Super Mario Bros. I was well aware of what to expect, considering I've beaten the game 100% many times, but what I got out of it more than ever is that New Super Mario Bros is indeed a fresh new experience, and it often doesn't get the credit it deserves. If it were called Super Mario Bros. 4 or Super Mario Bros. Forever, I guarantee you it would be seen as one of the best 2D Mario games ever made, but unfortunately, it's tied to a series that has two of the most unoriginal games I've ever played, and it did start an unfortunate trend. Too many succeeding games pretty much just wanted to be new Super Mario Bros., and they only took the more generic aspects from the game. I also think it started the trend of Nintendo focusing heavily on 2D platformers, especially during the 3DS and Wii U era. The question is, if I could go back in time, would I prevent New Super Mario Bros. from happening to stop the domino effect? Considering where Mario games are now, I wouldn't. Games like Super Mario Odyssey, the Mario and Rabbids games, Luigi's Mansion 3, and a few others are some of the greatest and most creative Mario games of all time, and Nintendo is willing to take far more creative risks nowadays. And honestly, New Super Mario Bros. is actually a very creative game that offered a lot new. It was my first Mario game. It made me a Mario fan for life. I loved playing the multiplayer mode with my brother. <laughs> there were a lot of fights because of it, the Mario and Luigi mode. I loved the mini game modes as well. And honestly, it's a staple of my childhood. And without that game, I don't think I'd be the Mario fan that I am today. Uh, and while I still have a distaste towards the new Super Mario Brothers series at the moment, it doesn't take away from the fact that this game was really instrumental to making me the Mario fan that I am today. Don't let the succeeding games like 2 and You sour your impressions, because New Super Mario Brothers still remains excellent and is well deserving of the new moniker. It's an excellent return to form and was a true evolution for 2D Mario. The only thing that's aged is just the 2D Mario gameplay itself. 2D platformers are better than ever now. You might be spoiled after playing Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze or Rayman Legends going to this game, but it's still a blast to play, even if it isn't as sophisticated. But for a new 2D Mario game, 
we need something just as new as this game was in 2006. But regardless, New Super Mario Bros. gets the ranking of treasure. New Super Mario Bros. Wii is still my favorite game in the New Super Mario Bros. series, but DS is a very close second. And that concludes the New Super Mario Bros. saga. We now have taken a look at every New Super Mario Bros. game, but our journey still remains super. Join us next episode for an in-depth look at the often polarizing Super Paper Mario. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments and keep calm and da-da on.